Layer blending modes are amazing in Photoshop. And right now I'm going to show you the five most useful layer blending modes. Hey, Cafe crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And today we're looking at one of my favorite features, and that is layer blending modes. Layer blending modes are good for saving you a lot of time and creating really amazing looks in pretty much one click. Now, this is not a comprehensive video. I'll give you a link underneath to my comprehensive tutorial. Right now, we're going to look at the five most useful blending modes. So layer blending modes, when we click on a layer inside the layer panel, we see the layer blending modes. And by changing this, we change the way this layer interacts with the layer underneath. Now, normal blending mode obviously is the most useful because that's the default, but we're not talking about that right now. All right, so here we've got some black text against a white background. Something you'll come across quite often when you scan and do different things like that. Now we wanna get rid of the white. I could use selections to get rid of it, but the problem is it's gonna take time, especially trying to get in all these little holes in here. And also what it's gonna do is it's not gonna give you a perfect edge. It's much easier to choose a blending mode that hides white. So the first blending mode we're gonna look at is click over here under normal, so the first one we're going to go down to is multiply. This top set hides white. Now darken would work too, but notice it doesn't quite give you the punch to the text as multiply blend mode does. Now notice too that the overlay is happening in this version of Photoshop. If you're using in an earlier version of Photoshop, you might not see this overlay. So let's choose multiply right now. And there we go. Let's click to 100%. And and here we go, we've got nice, clean black text as if it was printed right on here. Now, let me just show you something quickly. If this was reversed, and so we've got white text sitting on a black background, we need the opposite blending mode. And if we go under here, instead of this top set, we're gonna go to the next one, and there's two options, lighten and screen. Screen does exactly the same as multiply, except that the opposite, it hides black and it shows white. Now I'm gonna show you another use for screen mode. But before we do, if you aren't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button right now and turn on notifications to get new tutorials from me and also hit that like button, that's the thumbs up. Okay, here we are inside of a composite and I did mention that I wanted to show you another use. So let's create a new layer. So right now we've got a new layer, we're gonna drag it all the way to the top. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a lens flare. I wanna put a lens flare in here, but it's very difficult to know where it's going. So if we fill this with black and just hit the D key, we'll reset the foreground background color, option delete, and that would be alt delete on Windows, we'll fill that layer with black. Now we're gonna apply a lens flare in the middle. Filter, render, Lens flare. Now, if these are grayed out, make sure you're in RGB mode and not CMYK. Let's choose a lens flare. But just for fun, we'll go with this default one and we're going to click OK. Now, you see the lens flare over the top. What we want to do is hide everything else and show the image underneath. We don't want to cut it out. We want to go under our blend modes and we're going to move down to our screen. Notice that the screen mode shows this a lot better. So we could click on here and we could reposition where we want our lens flare. Maybe we want it to go right on the tip of her wand right there. Okay, let's go to our third blending mode, which is one that you've seen and maybe not used or understood it, and that's difference mode. Now this is a utilitarian mode and let me show you how it should be used. Okay, so we've got two copies here of our model Taylor. And notice that we can move that around. And sometimes you want to perfectly align two things. So sometimes you might do this, say, for example, you're cutting out a person and then you want to cut out the hair separately and you need to align it. Here's how to check for perfect alignment. Let's zoom in. And with the top one, we're going to change this to difference blending mode. Now, if you thought it was aligned before, now you can see it's not. See the difference there? And as I move it, it's going to go solid black. When we get solid black, we now have perfect alignment. And then from this point, you would go back to the 
other blend mode that you wanted to work in. And notice now we've thickened out the hair a little bit by doubling up on that. All right, let's go to another blend mode. But before we do, let me give you a tip. Here's a bonus tip. To change the modes, as you know, inside of Photoshop CC or Photoshop 2020 or newer, you can go down here and you can just scroll down and you can see these overlays. But how do you check these in earlier versions? So what you want to do is you want to make sure the move tool is selected. That's the V key. Then you're going to hold down the shift key and watch these blend modes. Right now it's in normal. If I hit the shift plus, notice now we're cycling through the different blend modes and you can see on screen. If you see one that you like and you want to go back, keep holding down that shift key and just tap the minus key. And now we're going through them backwards. That's how we cycle through all the layer blending modes. And by the way, I've got a free ebook I want to give you on layer blending modes. Yep, it's just pure content, no advertising. I'll give you a link to it underneath. Okay, number four. And by the way, you're going to love number five. I'm saving the best to last. Number four is overlay blending mode. What overlay blending mode does is it hides 50% gray. Let me demonstrate. If I create a new layer, and I click on the color swatch and then I say B for brightness to 50 and I click OK and then I hit the Alt or Option key to fill it with gray. We can see right now that we've got gray. Now if I change this into overlay blending mode, notice it makes that gray invisible. Now this has a lot of purposes and a lot of uses. One of them is if you want to use the dodge and burn tools. So say I choose the dodge tool here and this is going to lighten things up. And now if I switch to the burn tool, I'm going to drop the opacity to 40%. I can paint in shadows. And a nice thing about using the burn tool versus using just a straight color is I can't go over the edges. Notice it's not painting into the white. So I don't have to worry about masking those edges. All right, and if we look at this before and after, you can see how we were able to add a lot of depth and realism. And this works on all your photos, illustrations, whatever you want. All right, so let's go to number five most useful blending mode. And that's the color mode. The color blending mode preserves all the detail inside the photograph and only changes the color. Want to change the color of eyes, hair, Whatever clothing, in this case, butterfly, very easy. Create a new layer just by clicking on the new layer icon. Once again, go to our favorite blending modes and we are going to go down here to color. Now, I just want to mention something quickly. Notice there's five groups of layer blending modes and we've done one from each. We haven't done color yet, but we will. The first set is darken. So the darken mode works with the darker tones and hides white. The lightened tones, they hide black and work with the lighter tones. So we've got darks, lights, and the overlay works with the mid-tones. So these work 50% gray and around those mid-tones work in different ways. Then we've got our utilitarian ones, such as difference, exclusion, subtract, divide. And then finally, we've got our color ones, which we're working with right now, and we're going to select color. Now, with the color mode, all I need to do is choose a color. Let me go back to my regular color and why don't we pick a green? Nothing like a nice green butterfly this time of the year. Grab our paintbrush and now we're going to paint and look at this. I can make this butterfly green. What if I want to make it blue? No problem. Let's change the color to blue. And I've actually seen some of this color. They're really nice. And I could change it here. Or we could just do little spots like that. Or of course we could go down here and we could change the colors there as well. In fact, we can make them any color we want. We could go in and paint these individual if we wanted, like stained glass windows. So as you can see there, there was five very useful layer blending modes. All right, so I got a question for you. What's your favorite layer blending mode? Let me know in the comments underneath and also let me know if you learned anything new this week. By the way, if you're new, first of all, welcome to the cafe crew. Great to have you here. Hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications and you'll be part of the crew and get a new tutorial 
every single week. And by the way, every Tuesday we upload a video, every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific time, we do a live stream for one hour. And every weekend, right now we're doing Back to Basics weekends, where we do um, some kind of a basic technique inside of Photoshop. So that's three times a week we upload. If you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.